Hey, we're China, and I'm Simon. And I'm Simon. And I'm Fina, and you're watching Toasted. Guys, welcome to Groningen. Thank you. When did you arrive, actually? Just today? No, yesterday. Did you get a chance to see any bands at all? Uh, we saw a band called Her yesterday, after our own show. Yeah, we liked some parts and some parts we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> How did the show go down actually? Was it good for yourself? Uh, yeah, it, it went well. It was... Um, like we, 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 last time we played was like two months ago, right? Yeah. So we were kind of rusty in it, but we, we had a lot of fun on stage. Is it, is it still about fun for you guys to play live? Because I mean, it must be listening to your music. It must be tough to recreate the sound because it's so multi-layered. It is, and uh, especially because we, um, when we create a song, we we don't create it in the re rehearsal room, but we create it in our studios, and then we kind of have to figure a way to to perform it live. So sort of the other way around. Um, so yeah, as always, uh, we have to be a bit creative every time we we uh, we make a new song. I was uh, introduced. I introduced myself to your band through the music. I didn't know what you guys would look like. I didn't see any video. I just started listening, and um, the music is very. I think it's amazing. I think it's very well produced. Uh, and I was surprised about a couple of things. First, when I read on your Facebook page, the music comes straight straight out of their bedroom. So I was like, what kind of bedroom is that that you make so much fantastic music? Uh, we just make our music uh, at my bedroom actually, um, so I think uh, a lot of the music is programmed of course, so the computer is the main uh, like, uh, tool for making the music and then uh, you can actually like, record quite a lot in your bedroom, we can easily put up a microphone in front of a guitar amp. or maybe it's just fun to record some claps or percussion instruments or whatever in your room and then like we mix match that with uh, programmed stuff and it's it's more uh, relaxed to be working in a bedroom uh, compared to sometimes we go in the studio or we can do that now but it's i think the best tracks come out from just being in a very like low key place and just uh, try to work on there like 20 years ago if if somebody said my band was recorded in a bedroom people would laugh because it would be impossible to make great sounds in a bedroom but nowadays actually I mean a lot of bands do this there are even bands who like hire or rent an uh, Airbnb space somewhere to record their entire album yeah. so this is an exciting time for music production right it really is I think it's it's great that you can also like when you're on the road I have my laptop with me and when a pair of headphones and you can actually do a lot of really cool things just with that and um, it's like you don't need very much equipment. You, it's it's really very rare that the equipment is like the the thing that's holding you back. Uh, at least in our case, I think. So um, yeah, but lately we've been um, experimenting with uh, recording some some real drums as well. So that I mean that that requires a studio, obviously. But uh, so who is the drummer here? I mean. Uh, for the recordings, it's yeah we have we have a couple of drums with us, but yeah, it's, it's it's a bit different. That's actually the second thing I was wondering about. So I was listening to your music. I didn't know what you guys looked like. I didn't know what the videos would look like. Uh, and then I found out that you play live, and I saw the introduction of the the release party, and I saw this a three piece. I was, how can you recreate this sound live like this? It's amazing. How we can recreate. Yeah. It must be like, you're just three guys and you, you, may, you have so many layers of music and you produce it and you, you reproduce it live so well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would be tempted to have like 20 other musicians as well, you know. Or oh, to have other musicians, yeah. yeah. I don't know. We do, bring do a we do bring a drummer when we play live. None of us can play the drums, so... Uh, and yeah. Yeah. We, we, I guess we, we can play lots of instruments, uh, all of us. Yeah. So we have sort of, um, we like to do like the drums, you know, it's, it's we, uh, despite we're not drummers, you know, it's, it's, 
think we yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> well I can imagine that um, if you are all multi-instrumentalists that it's easy to record because everybody knows how to play a couple of instruments so you can build a massive sound but then to recreate this live you mean you can't play like five instruments at the same time so I was wondering you know maybe how, how big is this band but it is different live I would say like it is it is a bit more simple maybe I don't know uh, but yeah we, we, we really try to recreate instead of doing like another you know completely live version we we've, we've never liked that like to 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 make the song like in a different way we don't want that yeah, yeah also because like um we we really think the productions are like the essence of the songs often so if we perform them in another way like with different sounds live um, just because it was convenient, it would kind of not be true to the to the songs, uh, if you know what I mean. It's just um, it's really important that like the sounds are like sp it's the same. It's not that we try to like just recreate the same experience as listening to the recordings, but I mean the sounds ha have to be sort of similar. Do you actually record your stuff live? So it would be interesting to listen to your live gigs, right? We've we have listened to it like when someone have recorded it, but yeah, I think it sounds really different. I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> like it, it, especially the vocals, maybe. Like I have to sing in a bit different way live than than on the productions, yeah. but yeah. Exactly. I was I was actually uh, I, I made a lot of notes on the on the music. Uh, there's one uh, intro that I loved. Uh, let me see. Uh, never the same. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that live? And and I love the intro where your voice starts off and it's really gripping immediately. But it must be tough to do that live. Yeah. So I, ha I have like a cue in my ear, so I know exactly. when to start. Yeah. How did that song actually come about? I mean, did it did you jam it in the studio, or is it like you have basic idea and then you just start remixing, mixing it, or? It was, uh, as far as I remember, that song actually, we were all going to a festival like the next day, um, a festival called Roskilde Festival in Denmark, and um, and we just we were all together and we sort of yeah we jammed a bit I think also on the melodies together and we sort of um, we I mean we ha we still have those uh, um, recordings you know. Uh, computers in, this, in I mean the first versions were, were kind of kind of weird I remember but then like really quickly and just after we came home from that festival we just really quickly finished this actually I think it was pretty quick cross I, I had some <coughs> vocal like lines and the only one that's still in the song is that still you can count on me and I remember we just tried to play around with that sentence and yeah, it's like the essence of the song. Hey, I saw a small uh, on your website and or on Facebook that you guys are actually uh, on a small tour as well. There's a, so a Scandinavia tour, and I also saw Roskilde. Are you guys playing at the festival or in 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 the city or in the town of Roskilde? Uh, yeah, the one you saw is is in the town of Roskilde. Uh, yeah, we don't know about the. Are you asked for the festival? Because I mean, I think you are an outstanding band from Denmark, and of course, Roskilde Festival is world famous. I mean, they must be thrilled to have you guys there. Did you, did they approach you yet? Uh, we did play there last year, but uh, did. yeah, on yeah. the on the upcoming stage. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, how was that? It, it was it was great. It was yeah. great, uh, but I mean, I mean that festival is like in uh, every day in dreams of playing there, and I think everyone dreams of playing there. <laughs> yeah, probably. But uh, yeah, so I mean, we really hope to play there again. I mean, on a bigger stage maybe, and I mean, it would be the best. Roskilde, it's a fun festival because, like, it's especially every day night at least, have been there a lot of times. We've been there since we were like 16, uh, and so you see so many concerts there, and you imagine yourself so many times being uh, like up on the stage and thinking about, wow, it would be amazing if I at some point could get there. And it's like it's very graphic uh, goal to have. 
so when you kind of like accomplish that goal, that's a quite special feeling. I can imagine. That must have been a dream come true to be there. Was it also, I think, probably a little scary to be there, right? Yeah, definitely nerve-breaking. Yeah. yeah. It was like I don't sort of remember it because it was so uh, intense at, at the moment. Uh, yeah, you just build a lot of you know emotions in the days uh, before you play a, a gig like that. And then when it happens, it's just like you're a bit, a bit what? I can also imagine if you do play it, and if this dream does come true, then when it's over, th what happens? Do you set new goals? I mean... That's the thing, you know, it's, you always want, you know, yeah. more, yeah. I guess you, maybe you just, I don't know, maybe some people, it, you know, it's a bad thing, you know, because you, it's, it's kind of sad that then what what next like what exactly, what yeah. makes me happy sort of uh, but in but in some way it can all also be like you you, f you find like the core of what it's about that it's not about you know going there but it's about enjoying every you know step of it very well said hey listen um, I was of course checking some facts um, I found that uh, a video posted on the, on the YouTube uh, for we go back had uh, two and a half million views already which is ridiculous I think yeah. Amazing. I did, didn't know it had that many <laughs> that was only just one I think it's a fan who put it up I don't know because it's, it's like a, it's a picture with with the music on it and it's two and a half million views uh, I think it's a guy called mr. suicide sheep who uh, like uh, yeah, put it up on YouTube. I think we made some kind of agreement with him because usually it's not our thing, but like the label always tell people to put the songs down. Yeah, remove the songs, which is like, which of course makes sense because it's so important today to have a lot of view counts and uh, if there's a lot of random dudes putting up your music, then that doesn't look good. And I guess that's not a good thing. But like we did this agreement with uh, Mr. Suicide Sheep, and that was that was quite fun. I think it seems like YouTube is another audience compared to like uh, releasing your music in radios or Spotify or whatever. And uh, uh, and I guess there was a lot of like uh, um, attention coming from that. And that's the only song we have on YouTube because we don't have any music videos yet. So like, that's the only song you can hear. Hey, um, Spotify also away from me. Five million streams for one song. That's incredible, right? Yeah, it is. It's it's yeah. just you know it's something that happens on the internet and it's just uh, sick. <laughs> hey, of course the EP is just out. So once the lights are on, um, I can imagine though that you guys have more songs because there are six songs on the on. I call it an EP. Six songs on it. Why didn't you release a full-length album? Do you have more songs, or are you guys working on a full-length album? Uh, we're actually uh, working on another EP at the moment and I mean hopefully it's gonna be out not in not too long and uh, yeah after that we we really talk about making an album after that we really want to it's more uh, sort of monumental in a way it has more impact and uh, it's a bigger piece of uh, like it's, it's uh, probably the most ultimate creative challenge for your music to create an album yeah but yeah I mean just uh, sometimes like we can get a bit tired of the uh, s uh, like releasing singles all the time because it's so much one song isolated and we like I th uh, it would be so great to work with the like more more the context of the songs on an album uh, obviously it's not like the format is like too common but it's just uh, nice to have the opportunity to, like the the possibility to um, to have the context with a song so it's not just so, uh, yeah, single. Hey, really looking forward to uh, to the release. Uh, I hope you guys will be back this summer to play festivals. Are there any plans to play to do that yet? Like outside of Denmark? Yeah. I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, come over. Uh, we have a bit of uh, shows outside of Denmark for our spring tour, um, where we are I think we're going to Germany and France and England and Holland again. But um, we haven't planned a book the summer tour yet. It's uh, in the making.